Hi, my name is Jeff Silberman and I work as a solutions architect at Cisco Systems. This video is part of the UCS Advantage series designed to highlight that many common data center operational tasks become much simpler to address with Cisco's unified computing system. This segment will highlight the unified computing system's ability to address rapid server provisioning through service profile templates. Typically, there's a significant amount of time that's lost between when a server or blade chassis is present and the time when those physical assets come into service and begin serving applications and business needs. Much of this lost time is due to delays in cabling, connecting, configuring, and delays in preparing the data center infrastructure. Provisioning servers typically requires a lot of manual work that must be done on a serial basis, server by server. This is where the templates available in Cisco's Unified Computing System can really simplify data center operations. In the UCS data model, service profiles represent all the attributes of a logical server that have been abstracted away from the underlying physical hardware and physical connectivity. By supporting logical servers that can be disassociated from the underlying hardware, we're able to remove many limiting constraints around how servers might be provisioned and how physical servers might be easily repurposed for different applications and services. One option in constructing the definition of a logical service profile is to create it as a template and thereby have the ability to do rapid instantiation and provisioning of multiple servers. Here in the UCS data model, you can view the various logical building blocks that we use in terms of pools, policies, and isolation security methods to create higher level abstractions like virtual NICs, virtual HBAs, and ultimately service profiles that are independent of the underlying physical hardware. One important aspect of the UCS data model is that it's highly referential, meaning that you can easily reuse and refer to previously defined objects and elements without having to constantly redefine common attributes and properties. Okay, let's see how all this would look in action. I would start by pointing my browser to the IP address for my UCS domain. The UCS manager GUI would then download and run as a Java web start file. Keep in mind, the UCS domain is managed as a single system. You go to a single place to manage all the resources, regardless of whether it's one chassis or 40 chassis. So, for simplicity, let's start by using the Service Profile Template Creation Wizard and define the common properties for a server running SAP, for example. One of the first questions asked is Initial or Updating Template. This highlights a very powerful feature of UCS. This template will be used to instantiate one or more actual individual service profiles. The updating template feature allows all instantiated service profiles to retain the relationship back to the template so that any subsequent changes made to the template could get reflected immediately and in parallel to all instantiated service profiles. Next. I'll create the virtual HBAs for the SAP application class. This is where I define the number and type of VHBAs. Now instead of defining the VHBAs explicitly here, I'm going to make use of a previously defined virtual host bus adapter template that I've created called FC0A. All virtual HBAs and virtual NICs are going to use the same pair of access switches which we call fabric interconnects for shared I.O. connectivity. The data plane in UCS is active-active across both fabric interconnects that define a particular UCS server domain, allowing all servers to take advantage of two fully non-blocking access switches for all I.O. So by selecting the template associated with fabric B, I can then use standard host-side multipathing for any storage availability. The next thing we do is define the network connectivity or network profile for our SAP application class. And again, I'll use the virtual NIC templates to take advantage of the previously defined network profile properties that have been encapsulated in a reusable vNIC template. By reusing or referring to the vNIC template, we don't have to explicitly choose which MAC pool to draw from, which VLAN to expose, and which quality of service policy to enforce. This hierarchy of objects and templates helps to promote the notion of reusable objects 
by way of normalizing references and thereby reducing the potential for errors. I can hit Finish now and my service profile template definition is complete. Simple. If I need to, I can always go back to make changes and modifications. For example, here I'll add a boot policy to the template defining exactly which physical devices and in which order the servers will attempt to boot. Note here that these servers will sand boot, but without having to go enter the worldwide port name of the sand boot target storage array at the console on each and every individual server. I could also modify the host firmware package for the template to define exactly which version of BIOS and other low-level firmware bits should be run on the SAP servers. In UCS, we have abstracted even the BIOS version to be part of the logical server definition. We now have a complete definition for the SAP servers, a definition that, through the referenced templates and policies, includes everything, including VLAN security, quality of service policies, including boot device order, including sand boot target, even including BIOS version. And now that we have a template definition for our SAP servers, we can quickly and easily go and instantiate the actual service profiles or logical servers. So, how long will it take to create 30 instantiated SAP servers from this template? Let's see. Each of these 30 SAP servers has been created. And each of these 30 servers have their own unique identifiers. worldwide port names for the storage and MAC addresses for the network all unique for each individual server. Yet they all still share common attributes such as common boot policy and common BIOS version. Now something to highlight is that we have 30 SAP servers, yet from a physical hardware standpoint, we only have one blade chassis with only four physical blade servers. And this truly highlights the UCS model with respect to hardware state abstraction. Each of these individual servers has their own set of network storage identifiers, boot order, and even BIOS version that are completely independent of any physical hardware resources. The next step, assuming a sufficient number of physical blades, would be to simply associate the individual service profiles to blades or to associate the service profile template to a server pool of physical blades. However, you don't need to be idled and simply waiting for blades to show up. With Cisco's UCS, you can pre-configure the network and storage infrastructure in advance of the physical servers being present. And that's the topic for the next segment in the UCS Advantage series. To recap, in data centers, the typical server provisioning process is both manual and time-consuming. With Cisco's Unified Computing Systems Service Profile Templates, provisioning new servers is both fast and easy allowing data center operators to save significant time and energy when deploying new servers. Thank you for watching.